Okay, so let me move over to share my display. Today, let's just pick up where we left off with the same notebook from last class because we're only going to add a little bit. So I have this notebook here, class 11, with our last work in regression. And I'm going to run all, so cell run all, to arrive at the same place where we were last time. We had arrived at the ability to compute the linear regression to fit our data. And we obtained that very nice spot with a line that seems to approximate the data quite well. And we had computed the two parameters, A1 and A0, using the formulas that come from our linear regression derivation that is on the lesson. We didn't go over the derivation, but I do encourage you to at least look at it a little bit to understand where it comes from. We have an expression for the sum of the squares of the difference between the data points and the line that approximates the data points. And then we take derivatives with respect to the parameters in the model, which is something to notice, so that we can find the values of the parameters that minimize that deviation between the data and the fit to the data, in this case, via a line. So we wrote down some Python to obtain those parameters. But guess what? NumPy does it, in fact. So let's add a cell over here, a markdown cell. I'm going to leave some notes here that say, well, NumPy does linear regression with built-in functions. And this is what we're going to learn about today. So the lesson has a description and links to the documentation. So you should definitely look at the documentation for these functions. So one function is called polyfit. So let me write numpy polyfit to be explicit that the function comes from the numpy library. And this function polyfit uh, will give us the slope and the y-intercept of the line that best, best fits the data. So we didn't have to work so hard, and this should be a lesson to us, just like when we were writing custom functions to compute the mean. And I said, well, whenever you're writing something like this, and it sounds like other people might have need for that, then look up the possibility that NumPy already has a built-in function. And similarly with linear regression, if you think about it, it's not just us wanting to learn about linear regression. This is a very, very common application of data analysis. So polyfit is a function that will take as arguments. So let me say here that I'm going to give it the, I'm going to write here the arguments, x data, y data, and the number one that indicates here the degree of the polynomial that we want to use to approximate the data. So polyfit is not only able to give us linear regression, it is also able to give us higher order polynomials. In this case, we write the one here, the third argument is the degree of the polynomial to fit the data. In this case, one. So how would we use it with our data? Well, the X data is the year, the Y data is the temperature anomaly. And one thing to note is that if I just were to write numpy dot polyfit and I give it the year and the temperature anomaly and the degree of the polynomial and I execute that, it's giving me, as you can see, it's giving me two values as return. So this is a function that is giving me two values as return. So if I wanted to save those two values into Python variables to be able to use them later, which we want because we want to be able to plot the line, for example. So to plot the line, we need to use the A0 and A1 value. So notice that the first value here is 1.037 times 10 to the minus two. If I scroll up a little bit, you will see that that coincides with what we had obtained for A1. So the first return value corresponds to A1. And the second 
uh, parameter minus 20, you see here minus two times 10 to the power one is the second parameter. So what we want to do is to assign the return values of this function to two new Python variables. So let's call them a1 and I'm going to add an n for NumPy because we already have a1 defined before, the one that we computed and a zero n for the second parameter. And now I'm going to use the same code that is written in input line 17, numpy.polyfit and with year temperature anomaly and the degree one for a linear best fit. And now when I execute that line, you see that nothing is given to me as output because the important thing that happened here was the assignment. The return values of this function were assigned to two new Python variables. And indeed, if I were to write print a1 n, I get the value that corresponds to the first parameter. So that is the first step, getting the coefficients of the, of the linear regression using the NumPy built-in polyfit function. But NumPy does a little bit more. We have the ability to use another built-in function, which is numpy.poly1d. This defines a 1D polynomial and we use as arguments to this in parentheses, we send them together, you know, pack together the two parameters. So an additional pair of round brackets in there to pack them together. And one n comma a zero n is the two parameters that we're going to feed to this function. But I'm going to just show you that this returns something that is poly 1D. We're not quite sure what that is. So I'm going to actually assign that to a, I'm going to call it F linear and assign the return value of numpy poly 1D. And now I am going to use the Python type function to look at what the type of F linear is. And you see it's this NumPy poly 1D object. It's a function, it's a polynomial, a one dimensional polynomial. And what's important to note is that we call it like a function. So if I were to do print F linear, then it's, it's showing me a symbolic expression here for a line that has 0.01 as slope and minus 20 as y-intercept. So it is in fact a symbolic expression corresponding to a linear function. So what do we do now to be able to plot this just like before, pyplot.plot. What do we need to plot? We're going to plot the data. So year and temp anomaly, that's the data. Let's give it a color, red, why not? R for red and line style. We're going to plot this with a continuous line, which is indicated by a single dash. Line width, I'm going to give it one. This is going to make it a little thinner than the default. And now I'm going to add one extra plot in the same figure. The X values, again, is the year, but pay attention to this. This part is where often I see students having a little difficulty. We're going to use F linear, but F linear is a function. So to obtain the Y values corresponding to the line so that I can plot X values with Y values, I have to give this function f linear its input that is the year so f linear itself is a function to be able to plot with matplotlib we need the values of the function in the y coordinate another way actually to indicate color and line style is a shortcut that we can use here just directly say k for black and directly say double dash here for a dashed line. We can do it like that as well. There's always more than one way of doing things. Line width, well, not always, but uh, quite often. Line width equals two. And I'm going to add a label here, a label to afterwards. A label is, says regression to afterward be able to add a legend to my plot. Let's add always X label, Y label, and title is always the good habit to annotate your plots for your reader. Y label is the temperature anomaly. And sometimes it's also good to give 
the units and now pyplot.legend and we can perhaps decide to indicate a font size to make that legend more readable and I'm going to add a colon at the end here of my plotting block just to suppress some of that matplotlib output that comes out it's just aesthetic so here we have it. I forgot to define a fig size. So this came out as a figure that is a little bit less wide than the other one. It looks pretty much the same as the other one. You have a line here approximating the data. And the important thing to notice is this part over here where we had to give F linear the arguments, the array with all of the year values so that we would get as output the y values and we can plot then x values y values matplotlib wants two arrays to know how to plot those points so now we've learned how to use a uh, polyfit and poly1d these two functions are going to be very useful to you and they're also uh, feature prominently in your homework about linear regression when i look at this i don't know if you uh, see it as well, maybe in this figure is more visible. It kind of looks like I could fit one line up to about here. And it looks like this slope may have changed in the data around there, right? It looks like the trend is accelerating in the most recent years. And so what we can do here to explore that observation is what's called split regression. So we're going to approximate to align a part of the data in the beginning and the last part of the data with a different slope. So you can see, well, it, you know, we can take a guess that somewhere between 1960 and 1980, something changed. So it looks like the slope of the trend increased around maybe what well, looks like 1970 or so, right? So we're going to fit, let's fit two lines to segments of the data. That's what we're going to do now. So the first thing we need to do is we're going to decide when to break the data. We're going to break it around there. 1970 looks like a good place to break the data. So how do we find that point? We need to find the position in our year array where the year 1970 is located. For that, we have another NumPy goodness, which is the NumPy where. So we're going to find the location of the year 1970 using the NumPy where function. We pass a condition to this and NumPy where tells us where the condition is true. So how do we use it? Okay, so we could say NumPy where we pass a condition and NumPy tells us where this happens. We want to know where the year is equal to equal signs for a logical question here about the location of where the year is 1970. So if we execute that, it tells us 90. The index position 90 is where the array year is 1970. So now we can split the array with slicing to create two sets of sub data and that we can approximate with different lines. So let's create a year one array, which corresponds to, well, we can do actually the two year, the year and the temperature at one time. Python lets us uh, assign more than one thing at the same time. So let's do year one, temp anomaly one, and that is assigned to the result of taking the year array and slicing it from zero to 90 and taking the temperature anomaly array and slicing it also from zero to 90. So those two arrays have to be of the same size because I'm going to want to plot them together. Similarly, year two temp anomaly two that's going to be the second segment of our data and we're going to take the year array and slice from 90 until the end of our data and i don't need to enter that because i can leave it just with a colon that says from 90 to the end and temp anomaly also 
from 90 to the end of the array. And that's the final slice. Now that is going to break down our data into pieces. Notice the index 90 repeats as the end index in the first line and the start index in the second line because the end index is not inclusive. So the year 1970 in this case is being included in the second slice. Okay, we have two slices of the data. Let's do polyfit. Remember numpy.polyfit gives you two parameters. Those two parameters are the slope and the y-intercept. So let's now save them to, well, I'm going to actually use M and B here just because we're familiar with slope and y-intercept using M and B. And I'm going to apply numpy.polyfit with the first set of data. So year one and temp anomaly one. And remember, we have an additional parameter, which is the degree of the polynomial. Then I'm going to do the same thing with the second tranche of data, M2, B2 is the output of numpy.polyfit year 2, comma, temp anomaly 2. And again, the degree of the polynomial is 1. So these two lines are going to give us the regression the slope and y-intercept of the regression. And now on the same code cell, I'm going to get my lines. F linear one is the return value of numpy dot poly one D. I want a polynomial, a one D polynomial with the argument I pass to the numpy dot poly one D is a packaged ordered pair of M1, B1. And something to pay attention is the order of those two. If linear two is numpy dot poly one D, and I'm going to pass packed together inside two parentheses, M2, B2. Okay, let me execute that and no errors. So that's good. I noticed that we did a lot of things in that input line 27. Now, let's plot the two linear regressions. So I'm going to start with this time I'm going to define pyplot.figure, a size for this figure, fig size, and let me make that a little wider than taller, 10,5. And now I'm going to plot the data, pyplot.plot with year and all the data together, year and temp anomaly. This is still our data. I'm still going to color it red. I'm going to to save some space with R dash here, red continuous line. I'm going to say line width is one, and I'm going to plot the two approximations of the data in two separate lines. So let's do pyplot.plot with the slice year one, and I'm going to use f linear one. And remember that's a function. So if it's a function to be able to plot, I need actual values, numeric values. And so I need to feed this function the x values so that it will give me the y values to plot. And let's do this one in maybe black as before with a dashed line and line width two and label. We could say the years go from 1880 to 1969 and pyplot. Oops, look at that typo over there. Would have caused an ugly error. Pyplot.plot year two, f linear two with year two as inputs to this function. Let's make this one green and also dashed. Let's also make it line width is two and let's give it label with quotes 1970 to I think we go to 2016 in our data set. And now we should be adding, of course, our X label year, our Y label, temperature anomaly and our legend. Again, I'm going to give it a font size of 15 to get a little bit larger of a legend here. And I'm going to add at the end this semicolon at the very end of our plotting block. Execute that. And here is the result. You can see that indeed it does seem that it was a good idea to separate out our data. It does seem as well that the trend of increasing temperature anomaly over time since around 1970 is increasing more rapidly, which is not good news, I'm afraid. And there it is. That's the end of this lesson. We've learned quite a bit in this lesson. This is the capstone of our first learning module. And don't forget, 
part of this lesson about how to making your plots more beautiful with Matplotlib. And we've learned about functions as well. Don't forget to review about functions, what we discussed last class. And we've learned, of course, how to apply linear regression to data, which is surprisingly useful in many applications. The earth is also warming up. That's the final lesson here.